Hi, good morning. Robert Medlin here. I want to share some things to, this morning that, that would help you uh, maybe to understand how to be able to share the gospel more effectively. In 1 Corinthians, Paul says, Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with words of human wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For Greeks look for for wisdom and, and Jews seek miraculous signs, but we preach Christ crucified. A stumbling block to the Jews, foolishness to the Greeks, but to us who are being saved, Christ, the wisdom of God and the power of God. So uh, the message of, uh, Paul said, I, my message is about the cross. And so really that is the that is the message of, of anyone who's sharing the message about Jesus is the cross. And we may, we may mention other things uh, to get to the cross, but really the heart of the gospel is the cross. That Jesus paid for us on the cross. He died for our sins on the cross. He was the only one that was good. Uh, that's the message of the gospel. Is it? And, and then Paul goes on to say, in uh, in First Corinthians chapter two, he said, "When I came to you, brothers, I didn't come with superior wisdom or ex- excellence of speech, but but I resolved to know nothing when I was among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words of man's wisdom." But with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so your faith might not rest in the in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. And so, really, it's we're talking about the cross. The cross is the power of God for people to get saved. And so, my wife and I have had the pleasure to to minister to people from all over the world, from every status in life, from people that were very wealthy, uh, people with very smart, uh, people of every every nation, every a vocation you know it just seems like we minister to to just a, a big variety of people but it's the message of the cross it's the power of god for the salvation for everyone uh, who believes and so uh so that's that's what we that's what we preach is is jesus crucified now there are other things too you know that uh, that we share with people uh you know that, that a lot of people today are agnostic they believe in something uh, I believe there's power out there. I believe there's something out there. You know, I believe that I can tap into something that's bigger than me. And, you know, uh, there's somebody up there. I don't know his name. There's all kinds of people that have all kinds of feelings about God. Some people are totally oblivious, don't even think about God. They're not really atheists. They just don't think about it. And then there are some people that are just uh, that are atheists who thought about it and said, you know, I don't believe in God. <laughs> And then there are people that are that are skeptics, and those are people uh, that are that go beyond uh, being an atheist. A skeptic is a person that will never change their mind uh, about Jesus, about God. That their whole mission in life is to discredit anything that sounds like faith. And so it's very hard for a skeptic to be saved, but nothing's impossible with the Lord. So, um, so the Lord, uh, there's different ways that you can. That you can reach people like that and and uh, one of the things that i like to do is tell people about miracles because miracles bypass the 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 human mind the brain is at war with god the the human mind is at war with god and so miracles bypass the brain and go right to the heart jesus said if you can't believe because of my words believe because of the miracles and so we just tell people about about uh about miracles generally but we we share the gospel without sharing about miracles as well. Uh, you know that uh, uh, many times I'll tell people, well, you know the fact that that, uh, that that even a little child understands that there had to be a time before we look at this massive universe, there had to be a time when nothing existed. You know, the universe came into existence from nothing. The universe wasn't always here. If you go back far enough, you come to a time where where there was nothing there was no mass times space distance there was nothing no energy and the universe came into existence from nothing god created the heavens and the earth jesus said let there be and everything came into existence everything that is seen in the in the visible uh, universe and as well as in the spiritual universe uh, in the heavens in the in the realm of angels jesus created all things all things were created by him and for him so uh, just sharing that, you know, there had to be a time when nothing is, existed, 
and the universe came into existence from nothing. Even a little child understands that. And I said, but the God who created this this vast universe came to us. It's impossible for us to know him. He's so vast and so majestic, it's impossible for us to comprehend him. But he came to earth in human form just so we could get to know him personally. He came, took on the human flesh uh, in the womb of, of the Virgin Mary so that he could reveal himself to humanity until so we can know what God is like on a personal basis because God is personal. God is love. And so uh, God wants to, to just fill us with the knowledge of his love. And so Jesus came to fill us with the knowledge of the love of God in person. You can't, re you know, you can't relate to uh, a lot of people relate to other religions and other gods, but you, but you can't relate to something that's not personal. Jesus came in person so we could relate to him personally and, and not just some far off. He is the far off God, but but came to us personally to reveal himself. And so Jesus came for two reasons. One was to reveal himself and two to fulfill everything that he, he requires for us. Jesus came uh, to earth in human form to fulfill what what he created man to do what he created Adam to do. That plan was subverted by angelic beings uh, who, desi who desired to rule over uh, God's creation, to rule over man, rather than being servants of man. And so the whole creation has been perverted because man didn't, uh, Adam didn't fulfill his responsibility of having authority over uh, the angels, specifically Lucifer and, and, uh, and his crew. So Jesus came to fulfill everything that God purposed for man, and so those purposes for man was to be in the image of God. Jesus was the per Jesus was the image of God, uh, perfectly. Every every word that he spoke was the word of God. Every word in action, everything that he did was God in action. Jesus fulfilled the image of God. He he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For, and so Jesus. Jesus came to fulfill being in the image of God, and then he came to fulfill, uh, to rule and to, to have dominion, to, to rule over the earth and bring the earth into God's order, to, into perfect order. Uh, and, and so Jesus came to show how we do that. And so when Jesus came, he went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Uh, he went around healing the sick, raising the dead, feeding the hungry multitudes, uh, raising the paralyzed up. Uh, and so they could walk, healing the blind eyes and the deaf ears. Uh, Jesus did those things because that was, that's what man was called to do. That, that was man's purpose. Jesus did that to reveal that he is the Son of God and also to fulfill what God requires of us. Jesus, Jesus, everything Jesus did was what God requires of us. So we fall for, far short of the glory of God. We're, we're not even close. Jesus, Jesus is different from any other human being who has ever lived not just a little bit different he's infinitely different than any other human being that's ever lived jesus is no other human being there's there's lots of gurus and there are lots of people that think they're wise and that have all these wise philo philosophical sayings and and wise religious ideas but but they are they're infinitely less than jesus jesus was infinitely greater than they are Jesus was infinitely greater, not just a little bit, infinitely greater. Everything that Jesus did proves it. There's nobody on earth today running around raising the dead, stilling the storms, uh, healing blind eyes and deaf ears, uh, multiplying the loaves and the fishes. Jesus did all those things to reveal who he is and to fulfill what we're supposed to do. And he's given us the authority to do those things now. So, and those things do take place uh, through the church, through many, many people today with the authority of Jesus because Jesus said if uh, those that believe in my name they'll do the things I've been doing they'll even do greater things than these because I'm going to the Father <laughs> and so he said you can ask me anything and I'll do it so Jesus is Jesus is fulfilling his ministry through the church right now but but that's God's plan was was for that's what is required of humanity well we all fall short of the glory of God and Jesus was the only one that didn't Jesus lived perfectly his life uh, Jesus was raising the dead. Jesus didn't have to die on the cross. Jesus submitted himself to death as a substitute for us. Jesus lived his life as a substitute for us. Jesus submitted himself 
to death as a substitute for us. Jesus descended into hell as a substitute for us. Jesus was raised from the dead as a substitute for us. Jesus did all those things for us. Jesus didn't have to die. First of all, judiciously, he didn't have to die because uh, there was no there was no sin in him, and there was no judgment on him. So he didn't have to die. He said, "I could summon twelve legions of angels." You know, it, it, it's, that's you know the cross is not a problem for me. The cross was God's purpose. So Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross, he was just fulfilling, uh, he was taking the judgment for all the things that we do, for the sins of the whole world, for all the shortcomings of the whole world, for all the failures, beginning with Adam, all the way down to, to today and, and in the future until he returns. Jesus took the judgment for the sins of the whole world on his own body. And we're all sinners. And so uh, many times I'll ask somebody, you know you're, you know you're a sinner. You know, first I'll explain that Jesus is different than anybody else and not just another man, not just another guru, not just another teacher. And then I'll say, you know, you know that you're not perfect. You know that you're that you're wicked. And uh, and most people will admit that very a few people will say, well, I think I'm a pretty good person. <laughs> that person's heart is so hard. Uh, I used to think like that before I became a Christian. You know, I think I'm a pretty good person, but the fact is, is that, is that we we fall far. we God doesn't compare us to, to each other. You know, well, at least I'm better than so and so over there. That's what I used to say. Well, I'm better than most Christians anyway. <laughs> God doesn't compare us with other people. God doesn't compare us with anyone else but Jesus. Jesus was God's standard. And we all fall short of the glory of Jesus. We all fall short of the glory of God. So we're all sinners. Um, have you raised the dead lately? Have you healed the paralyzed lately? Have you healed the blind lately? Those are the things that God requires of man. Have you not done that? Have you multiplied loaves and fishes to feed the poor? Uh, do you know of people that are in trouble, that are that are hurting, that don't have food, that you're not providing, and you have extra food and you're not providing for them? Are you providing for them? You know, there was a young man that came to, to Jesus. Uh, he was a rich young ruler. And he said, what do I have to do to have eternal life? And Jesus said, well, well, you know, you what do you think? You know, what, what does the law say? And he said, well, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. You know, honor your father and mother. Don't steal. Stuff like that. He said, all these things I've, come, I've kept since I, was a, since I was a youth. Jesus said, well, there's just one more thing you need to do. You know, we can think in comparing ourselves against other people that we're pretty good. Jesus said, there's just one more thing you need to do. Go sell everything you have and give it to the poor and then come and follow me. And that young man said he was de dejected because he couldn't do it. So God has all, if we want to be, uh, we can't be like Jesus. You know, uh, we, we can try, but we can't. So every human being is far short, infinitely falls short of the glory of Jesus. I don't care which philosopher, I don't care which religious leader. It is. They fall far short of the glory of Jesus. And so uh, my wife and I have had the privilege of, of, of sharing the, the good news about Jesus uh, with people from every nation, uh, as I mentioned, uh, and, and ex explaining the gospel to them, explaining the cross and explaining. They all know. You know we're wicked, don't you? And. And from Japan, they say yes. From North Korea, or from Korea, they say yes. From India, they say yes. Uh, it doesn't matter. From Russia, they say yes. From Germany, they say yes. From whatever nation, yes, we all know that we're wicked. We all know that we're a mess. And so that's the condition of human nature. That's why Jesus died on the cross. And so the, the cross is the power of God for the salvation for everyone who believes. So in all of our witnessing and all of our sharing uh, testimonies, we share miracle testimonies. Uh, with people to soften their hearts. Uh, we tell them about miracles and, and you can tell people about miracles in your life, the things that God has done to rescue you and answer your prayers. But really what what people need to hear is they need to hear that Jesus paid for them on the cross, that he died for their sins, that their sins are paid for. If they believe in Jesus, their sins are paid for and they're going to heaven. That's what people need to hear because that is the good news. That's the gospel. And so we don't want to ever get too far from the cross. That's why Paul said, uh, Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel and not with words of human wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. We don't want to be emptying the cross of Christ of its power. Just because someone doesn't accept 
the message of the cross doesn't mean that the cross is not powerful. There were many people that were that were that rejected the message of the cross uh, in Jesus' day and in in the Book of Acts in the early church. There are many people that rejected the message of the cross, but look at the multitudes of Christians, uh, over two billion Christians around the world, that have believed that that Jesus died on the cross for their sins and that he was raised from the dead and he is the Lord. The cross is the power of God for the salvation of over two billion people. And so don't get discouraged if somebody doesn't pay any attention to it. And don't be shocked when somebody that you think would never pay any attention to the message of the cross when they accept Jesus. Because more times than not, when we share the gospel with people uh, and clearly and explain why Jesus had to die on the cross and who he was, and and their need for him most of the time the people will believe there are a few people that don't but you don't don't get discouraged by that just keep preaching the message just keep preaching the good news about jesus just keep telling them about the cross just keep telling them that that jesus paid for us on the cross and tell them about the miracles he did uh you know tell them about he you know he's not he's different from everybody else you know nobody else is 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 stilling the storms by just saying peace be still nobody else is multiplying loaves and and fish to feed crowds and multitudes of people nobody else is raising the dead and opening blind eyes and casting out demons and demons demons saying demons coming out of people screaming i know who you are (laughs) you're the son of the living god so jesus is different don't be ashamed of the gospel because i'm not a in another scripture in Romans that I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. Everyone who believes. Jews, some people look for wisdom, some people seek miraculous signs, but we preach Jesus and him crucified because it's the power of God for the salvation. So no matter what you're sharing with people, uh, the, the, the foundation of what you're sharing is the cross. It's the message of the cross that's going to get people saved. It's believing that Jesus was the Son of God, that he died on the cross for us. That's the foundation of the gospel. Jesus is different. And and Jesus did all those things for us as our substitute. And go with confidence that when you speak, it is the Lord speaking through you. Uh, Jesus said when you're called to testify, he said don't worry about what you're going to say. He said just speak what's given to you because it won't be you speaking. It will be the Spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit speaking through you, ministering to them, pouring out the love of Jesus to them. And so be bold. Keep your eyes on the cross. That's the, that's the, the principal message that we, that we preach when we're, when we're evangelizing, when we're sharing with people about Jesus, when we're encouraging people in the Lord. Uh, just bring them back to the cross because what happens is a Christian that believes in Jesus can get confused. You know, they they're not going to church. They're not reading the Bible. They're not hearing the gospel preached. Maybe they're hearing the wrong gospel preached in the church that they're in, and they're confused. And so they don't, they don't feel like they're saved. They don't feel like they're any good, you know. And so what they need to hear is, hey, you believe in Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. In fact, God sees you already seated in heaven with Jesus. You're already seated there. And according to Ephesians 2, he's raised you up and seated you together with Jesus in heavenly places that in the coming ages you might be for the praise of his glorious grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus so Jesus has he's paid for you in God's mind your sins are forgiven you're already seated with Jesus in heaven you know that that fills people with joy because it gets their eyes off themselves Uh, because if you get your eyes on yourself you'll either get prideful comparing yourself with other people or you'll start to feel depressed because you're not you don't feel like you measure up to other people it's not about other people. It's about Jesus. And you fall short of the glory of Jesus. And and Jesus paid for you and bought you with his own blood. That's the message of the gospel. And so be bold to share. Um, be bold to testify. Be bold to share. Don't be embarrassed to share because you've got spiritual dynamite uh, to, to share with them uh, in the message of the cross and the blood of Jesus because... That's the message that will knock all the unbelief off, that will knock all the confusion out of their minds. Uh, and, it, and it doesn't matter what religion they grew up in. It doesn't matter what philosophy. It doesn't matter what they were. Two minutes before you share the gospel, the gospel is the power of God for the salvation for everyone who believes. And so uh, I just pray that you would be uh, be active in sharing your faith 
and the scriptures tell us to be active in sharing your faith so you'll know every good thing you have. The more you talk to people about Jesus and share Jesus, the more you understand the good things Jesus has done for you. It's a wonderful thing. It just reinforces your faith as you share about Jesus. I just pray, Lord, that that the person watching this, had, I know they have a heart. Nobody would watch this video unless they had a heart to, to share the gospel with others. And I just pray that you would give them boldness and give them wisdom and give them confidence and faith, Lord, that it's not about them, that the message of the cross is the power of God. The message of the cross is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. They will, they will have faith and boldness to, uh, to proclaim the cross. That's the main thing. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. If you believe in him, your sins are forgiven. He was raised from the dead. If you believe in him, you're going to go to heaven. That's what the scriptures tell us. That's what the scriptures tell us. That we're righteous by faith in Jesus and what he's done for us. And so, um, just uh, Lord, just provide opportunities for the people that are watching this video to share the gospel. And encourage them, Lord, in Jesus' name. God bless you and have a wonderful day.